sampling population sampling frame study population sample probability sampling non-probability sampling sources of errors sampling is the process of drawing a smaller number of individual cases from a larger population it is a way to learn about a larger population by obtaining information from a subset of a larger population here are some examples of sampling presidential polls are based upon samples of the population that might vote in an election dozens of campaign consultancy firms provide polling services to candidates It is a process of deploying surveys, or polls in the election year, to focus on issues prioritized by people, analyze engagement of people in the elections, understand what people think of the electoral candidates, and to whom people favor on voting day. In market research, offering product samples to prospective consumers, gives the consumers a taste of the new product. When consumers test a new product, they often make mental notes about what they love, or hate about the new product. And quite often, they compare the product with a competitor's product. This serves as an opportunity to learn more about your target market, and how you can improve the product, so it exceeds consumer expectations, and gives you a competitive edge. Why do we sample? To learn something about a large group, without having to study every member of that group. The population of interest is usually too large, to attempt to survey all of its members. Time, and cost, are important factors to consider in research. Studying every single instance of a thing, is impractical or too expensive. Like in a census, data about all people or households are collected in the population. This may be accurate, but extremely expensive to run. Another reason for sampling, is to obtain in-depth information about each subject, rather than superficial data on all. We also want to minimize the number of things we examine or maximize the quality of our examination, of those things we do examine. Population is defined as the group of elements from which a researcher samples. It can also be defined as including all people, or items, with the characteristic one wishes to understand. The sample is a smaller number of individual cases, drawn from a larger population. The goal of sampling is finding a representative sample, or subset of that population, because there is very rarely enough time or money, to gather information from everyone, or everything in a population. A carefully chosen sample can be used as the representative of the population. The sample, which represents, also reflects the characteristics of the population from which it is drawn. Sampling frame is defined as the list of all the sampling units from which sample is drawn. It is the part of accessible target population for study. Take note, the sample can be taken from accessible target population, and not from the entire target population, unless the researcher has access to the entire population. Also known as the study population. The first type of sampling is the probability sampling. It is a method of sampling that uses a random selection so that all units or cases in the population have an equal probability of being chosen. 
The methods under probability sampling include simple random, systematic, stratified, cluster, and multi-stage. The next type of sampling is the non-probability sampling. It does not involve random selection, and methods are not based on the rationale of probability theory. Sampling methods under non-probability sampling includes purposive, quota, convenience, availability, and snowball. Sources of error associated with sampling Sampling frame errors It is the deviation between the sampling frame and the target population. It occurs when members of the population of interest are not in the sampling frame, which is the list of individuals, businesses, or households used to select the sample. It occurs when a sample is selected from the wrong population data. It occurs when the sampling frame contains either more, or less, of a particular type of potential respondent, compared with the population of interest which is referred to as coverage errors, over coverage or under coverage. Here are some examples of sampling frame errors. People are typically left out, if samples are drawn from phone books, car registrations, email listings, etc. Unlisted phone numbers, are one of the greatest potentials for coverage error. In order to avoid this, people usually use random digit dialing. A method for selecting participants in a telephone survey, that involves randomly generating telephone numbers. Pollsters use random digit dial to avoid errors due to unlisted numbers. Next is non-response errors. These are errors that result from differences between non-responders and responders to a survey. It occurs when there are major differences between the people who responded to a survey, and the people who were sampled. Here are some examples of non-response errors. It occurs when there are differences in demographics, such as age or gender. If the sampling frame is split evenly by gender, but 90% of responses are males. It occurs when survey responders, are systematically different than non-responders, on the key concepts the survey is measuring. For example, if a survey intends to measure customer satisfaction, and only unhappy customers respond to the survey, the results will not reflect the opinions of all customers. When research surveys are difficult to use or understand, respondents may break off and stop doing the survey, which will lead to non-response error. These respondents, who are part of the study population, break off, and do not anymore complete the survey. Time constraint. People might not be home to pick up the phone in the early evening, when most survey organizations make their calls. Weak or no signal constraint. Mobile phone users might not be able to receive calls, or messages, when they're far or out of coverage area, or phone is low in battery. Another is sampling error. This happens when there is any difference between the characteristics of a sample, and the characteristics of the population, from which the sample is drawn. This occurs when an analyst selected a sample, that does not represent the entire population of data. And the results found in the sample, do not represent the results that would be obtained from the entire population. These errors may also occur because of variation in the number, or representativeness of the sample that responds. Sampling errors can however be controlled by careful sample designs, large samples, and multiple contacts to ensure representative response. Just to summarize, sampling is a means to get good research data. We sample because studying every element in our population is frequently beyond our means, or would jeopardize the quality of our research.
On the other hand, we don't need to sample when studying every member of our population is feasible.